Uh, as we mentioned, ATF and FBI investigators have been on this scene for days now, and so they continue to comb over the evidence. But bomb technicians have really been able to piece together the devices, and what they have found is similarities between all of the devices that have exploded here in Austin. Every bomber has what we call a signature, um, and when, once they find something successful, a successful way to make their bomb, they usually stick with that so they don't make mistakes and injure themselves. So again, we saw that signature throughout, and you know, one of the things that was consistent in these devices is that there was nails and screws in each one of them. The ATF believes the same person built all of these devices. According to Representative Michael McCall, who was briefed by the FBI, Conant purchased these bomb-making materials from a Home Depot near his home. Now, obviously, these packages are a key part of this investigation, but there were other things, more of a paper trail, that helped lead investigators to the suspect. Tony Plohetsky is with Mike Rush in the studio with more on that part of the story. Thanks, Terry. Tony, let's get right to it. How did they get this suspect's name? When did they get the suspect's name? So Mike, I want you to think of it as a big puzzle with multiple pieces. And so over the past week, but particularly within the past 36 hours, investigators were able to put those pieces together. They, one of the key pieces of evidence that they were able to obtain were store receipts that showed what materials were being purchased. But also in addition, the biggest break in this case, I'm told, came from uh, when investigators Investigators were able to get security video from that FedEx store on Brody Lane. The, you can see those pictures there. And they were able to use those pictures to interview people who know this suspect and get confirmation that it was, in fact, Condit. From there, they also simultaneously were able to get other information. And Mike, one thing in particular that they were able to obtain was a Google search history from Google showing the different websites that Condit had been searching in recent days. One of the things that investigators were were most concerned about Mike and I found this very fascinating and frankly very chilling is that authorities were able to confirm by looking at that Google search history that Condit was looking up addresses in other places in Austin and in nearby communities as well and in fact I'm told that last night that prompted authorities to actually dispatch law enforcement officers to those addresses to warn those homeowners, Mike, that they may be in danger and to actually check those front porches to ensure that there were no packages there. Okay, so to be clear, we are not looking to try to identify any of these potential targets, but we do want to know, and I think people in the public want to know, uh, were these family members, were these friends, were these complete strangers, was this random, these people that he was supposedly targeting? Targeting next? That remains a big focus of the investigation, but I do think we are going to, in the days to come, learn more about that. But what law enforcement has told me as this investigation has unfolded is that while motive is important and they certainly understand that people in the community have a desire and an almost emotional need to find out what that motive is their whole focus or large focus this whole time has been figuring out who this is and stopping that person, Mike, right. before they offend again. Okay.